Hello, all you uh, flight simmers out there. Commander Kingfish here, and we are back in Air Hauler 2 and Microsoft Flight Simulator. And so today we have uh, some things to cover. We want to cover factory spreadsheets. Uh, we want to pay on the loan and we've added some new planes and we're going to add another base. So uh, we might as well get started. So I guess first things first. Let's check on the company finances and see how we're doing there. Uh, if you remember the last episode, we pushed over 5 million. Well, we're at uh, 7.7 .7 million uh, today and ever so steadily increasing that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And so our uh, operations are actually, uh, I've already got all of my uh, pilots flying today. And this is just the first round. I'll, uh, They've all got one or two missions or cargo runs at the most right now. And so I will uh, up sign more af after I get done uh, doing the recording here. But you can see they're already going to have a total income of 107000 And they have been managing to make that on a pretty much daily basis. Uh, 108000 to probably a little over 220000 so that's pretty good for this set of pilots, and uh, I'm pretty happy with their production. Uh, so let's go to the fleet. I did add another uh, aircraft, uh, another Cirrus, and I have that Cirrus kind of uh, designed or set up to do commodities and missions. And uh, the new pilot, Maya, will also do some cargo runs here and there because part of the problem with uh, the cargo or with the uh, missions and commodities, your pilot doesn't gain any experience. So we don't want them to just stay as a wannabe. So if we go over to our operations, our pilot, you can see Maya she uh, uh as you know i hire the wannabes and then start building them up so i've been getting her a few cargo runs she's done three cargo runs so she is getting some experience as well as uh the commodities and stuff that uh, i've been having her do so that was new planes and a new pilot uh, and we've one of the other things i wanted to mention is microsoft uh, is having a their spring sale and I bought uh, three new planes to add and so if we go over here to aircraft management you can see that I've bought the Junkers uh, 52 which isn't bad it has a cruise speed of 126 uh, it has a cargo cap of 10 uh, 10,000 uh, but it will require two pilots so that's just something to keep in mind I also bought the Boeing Stratoliner, and it is a uh, cruise speed of 142, but it has a cargo cap of uh, uh, 14,000 um, and uh, or a little more than that. And again, it will require two pilots, uh, so uh, but it can haul a lot more cargo and uh, that will be a really good plane to uh, pull in once we're up to some really large uh, cargo runs. And then the uh, third one that I bought is the uh, Embraer, uh, let's see here, uh, 110P. And it has a cruise speed of 248, which will be really nice. Uh, it has the, uh, again, it will require two pilots uh, but it has a 4,800 uh, cargo cap, and so you can cover quite a, uh, quite a bit of mileage with it and uh, uh, a lot quicker than some of the other uh, planes. And so some opportunities with that might be to load up two or three cargo runs that are going cross-country and fly them to another base and unload them and then assign those out to pilots that you have in that base area. So there's just some things that you might be able to do with that. So those are the new planes. And again, uh, it's the spring sale on Microsoft. So I don't think I paid, but uh, uh, maybe $10, $10 at the most for, for any of one of these. 
The other thing that I bought during the spring sale, or while it's still going on, is I bought a uh, new uh, airport up in Alaska called uh, the Homer Airport. And then I also bought the Flagstaff Airport, which is the airport that we're going to be opening up our new base on today. So uh, those I got as well. And again, they were all on sale, so I, I didn't pay too much for any of them. So. Uh, so let me kind of cross those off the list. And let's see. Uh, I have uh, uh, my personal info. We've got another achievement. We managed to have fly, uh, 10 aircraft into the fleet. So we've got a fleet god achievement. So we're steadily picking off these achievements as they are uh, coming, coming up. I think the next one will probably be, let's see, uh, maybe the 10 million, where was it? Uh, the 10 million, 5 million. I thought there was a 10, maybe it's the 50 million. No. Oh, probably will be the 10 bases is what our next uh, achievement will be so once we hit that and we're we're closing in on that achievement so uh, that's that's achievements all right let's uh, we can go ahead and close that out and we can close this out we're done with that uh, let's see the other thing I wanted to show uh, is the company info since we started doing missions We've got our mission rep up to 76. We get two, two points every time we complete a mission. And so our overall uh, reputation is up to 72. And this will be important when we're ready to get uh, really uh, another loan somewhere on down the line if we decide that we need it. We'll get a much lower interest rate on that. And so uh, we are steadily pushing that up. So you can see that our uh, Graph lines are moving up and with both of these. So we were uh, leveled off there at uh, 60 uh, once we got our cargo rep up to 100. So we will level off at 80 once we get our mission rep up to 100. And we're steadily doing that. And then it might be a while before I uh, actually do any PAX reputation and PAX runs. All right. Uh, so let's see. The other thing that we want to do is we want to pay on our loan. So let's go over to, uh, company. Let's see. Uh, company finance and click on loans. And so we've got, uh, 500 and uh 60,000 still left on that loan. We're about halfway paid off, but we want to repay on the capital. And so what I wanted to pay today was 280,000. So let's bump this up to There we go. Uh that's close enough, 284,000. So that's basically going to split this in half. So let's go ahead and make that payment. And yep, we want to pay on that. And so now we are down to 275,000 and you can see our monthly payment has gone down to uh, 4,000. So that's kind of the whole purpose is getting this uh, uh, payment out of the way. So if we go back over here, you can see that our monthly overhead has dropped uh, and we get that out of there so that the only thing that our monthly overhead, not including fuel and landing fees and stuff, will be for our pilots and for our base costs. So we've got the uh, loan paid off. All right. So now the two big things left, uh, other than flying up to Flagstaff, is uh, spreadsheets. I finally broke down and created a spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and open that up. And here is the spreadsheet. So I have uh, Microsoft 365 
so I have access to the Excel spreadsheet. But uh, there's some really good open source stuff out there, like under the, the Libra Office. Uh, basically, it's just like having Excel. So if you don't have Excel, then you can uh, uh, look for that open source uh, Excel spreadsheet out there and use that. And basically, you can do pretty much everything in that open source. If I didn't have 365, I would be using uh, the Open Libra as well. So I've created a different tabs down below down here. And so I created one that uh, will list my bases and I'll add Flagstaff on here when I'm ready. And then uh, I've got a tab that just had, or uh, you know, part of that is the aircraft that I have into the fleet. And I can open that up and just kind of get an idea of what my load limits are. So when I'm assigning cargo runs, I can see that the Skyhawk, uh, I can load up to 726. Now you can always adjust those just a tiny tab uh, by offloading some fuel and stuff. But uh, for the most part, uh, these are what the uh, guidelines that I'll use. And then how many planes I have in the fleet. Like I have the original Skyhawk, I have one. The Jabiru, I have two. Uh, the Cirrus, I now have three because I bought that one for Maya. And then uh, my plane and then my two uh, Cessna T207s and my one Beechcraft. So that's uh, what uh, my base base and plane info is all about. I also created a items list. So this one took me a little bit because I had to open up the items uh, tab. And matter of fact, I'll hop over there and show you where that's at. That's under factories. And then you have, uh, let's see, that is actually, sorry. We go up to factories. We have a items tab here. And so it's a commodities item database. Now you can't export this out. So I had to go through and actually type all of these into the spreadsheet but this gives you the tier one, the tier two, and the tier three. And if we go back to the spreadsheet, uh, you can see that I've put all of these in. I also looked up what the lowest world price is and what the highest world price is. And then I put down what the median price would be. So the mid range between those. That way I can use that to make determinations on what I want to build for my factories. And if missions are profitable or will be profitable, I can kind of look on here without having to do all the search work on the others. I just got it handy here in this uh, spreadsheet tab. Uh, so as you can see, uh, I'll show you a good one when, just so that uh, when we get to our factories, uh, if we go down to precious metals, you can see that uh, the lowest price was 56. Uh, the highest price was 101 for precious metals because precious metals are needed in uh, building jewelry and we'll see that down below and so the, the median price is $78 and that's or 7850 and this uh, is the base tab San Diego where I built the factory so if we scroll back down here you can see that it costs me $78 for each precious metal. So that's not too bad. That's a good mark to look for on your commodities and stuff. Uh, so if we scroll on down, I've got the tier two uh, items which require a factory. You can't find any of these tier two items out in the different bases. You have to have a factory to make them. And so if we look at the air hauler CD as an example, it requires plastics, and then these little parentheses behind it, I put in denotes that that's a tier two product. So if we scroll down to plastics, you can see that uh, we would need to have a factory in order to generate plastics. Now, the these numbers over here, these dollar figures represent the lowest cost. So chemicals uh, the it takes two chemicals for a to create one plastic and so uh, and that's what this is that's what this two is 
and uh, I actually missed something here. So let me do that, fix this while we're... Okay, I had a little bit of a glitch there when I hit uh, F2 on uh, correcting that one cell on the spreadsheet that I was covering. I ended up turning off my bandy cam, which was recording my air hauler and my spreadsheet side of things. So I have managed to get this... Uh, uh, re-recording this, and so I think I was working on the items list, and so we'll just kind of, I'll just kind of briefly go through the spreadsheet here uh, on what I had left to do. So basically, this items list is, again, if I repeat myself, sorry, but this items list kind of gives me an idea of all of the products and what the uh, cheapest in the world is and what the most expensive in the world and what my median price would be between those. And so I'm using that to help decide on my factories. So if we scroll down here, uh, I've set up a jewelry factory at uh, uh, San Diego, Browns Field, and that is going to cost me two precious metals, which uh, I think uh, is $78 at uh, Browns Field. And so also, I am, uh, and so I'm able to kind of use that as a guideline to setting up my factories. So that was the items list. So commodity runs, basically that's just I'm identifying places that I can, uh, if I don't have any cargo runs that I can do or my AI's pilots can do, I can have them do a commodities run, like uh, out of Stockton. I can buy cigarettes there for $103 and send them down 45 miles away to Atwater and sell them for 137. And that is a $34 per pound profit. Uh, here's another one. Uh, it's uh, buying <coughs> at uh, Truckee, uh, which is 90 miles away basically from Sacramento. And Sacramento is only about uh, 15 miles away from Stockton, I believe. So I could fly out to Truckee, buy medicines for 148 and bring them back to Sacramento and sell them for 211 for a $63 uh, profit. And so the yellow denotes uh, my uh, bases runs. And so like out of Browns, I can do uh, prawns and fish uh, with a return back. So that works out pretty good. Um, perfumes out of Medford, which is close to my Grants Pass base. And so if I really need something out of there, then I can do that. Typically, though, I pretty much have a, enough cargo runs that I don't have to rely on this. This is as much for me as a pilot as it is for my AIs. Uh, <clears throat> next tab is I just created some base mileage. Uh, once I start getting my numbers for uh, <clears throat> for Flagstaff, I will be updating these numbers in here. And give me just a second here real quick. I need to get a bottle of water as my voice is, feels like it's starting to dry out a little bit. So... <clears throat> Retalking all of this over again <clears throat> really is going to uh, tax my voice quite a bit. Anyway, that's my base mileage chart. And so I'll just continue to build this as I do bases. And it's pretty easy to set up. So when I add a new base, I'll just add it here, add it here. And then that kind of works all the way across, uh, just like you see in the maps and stuff. All right. So my next one, <clears throat> I've created a tab for my base. And so this is the Stockton. Uh, I can uh, export this list right here all out of Air Hauler. Uh, I have that ability to do that. And so it'll export those out to a spreadsheet. And then I can just cut and paste and drop it here on this uh, main spreadsheet. And this happens to be uh, Stockton. Uh, I can make a couple of uh, uh, different factories here that uh, at some point. now. Let's hop over to San Diego because this is where I've really <clears throat> made my first factory. 
And so uh, again, I exported the items list, the commodities list out of uh, Air Hauler and brought it in. Uh, I have the ability uh, with these different commodities to be able to create these particular tier two and tier three factory builds <clears throat> without having to fly in uh, commodities from some other airport to do my, to, to help or to process my factory. If I really wanted to get the cheapest, I could do that. But by looking at and managing the, uh, what, uh, where I open up my factories, then I think in the long run, that's going to be even cheaper because I'm not going to have to spend money flying products in. So in this case, I can build uh, what I feel is uh, <clears throat> three different factory builds, automotive parts, tools, and jewelry. I've built the jewelry factory, and we'll uh, I'll show you that a little bit further here in the spreadsheet. Uh, and then I think the next factory I'm going to build is tools because I've been seeing some of those out there on the uh, missions board. Uh, that uh, So I think uh, that can be fairly profitable because it will cost me just one machine part. So it'll cost me $49 to build uh, tools. And then I've been seeing those go for uh, <clears throat> $60, $70 a pound and a little higher on s some places. So that's that's not too bad. But anyway, I got the jewelry factory up and going. So let's scroll over. So I've got areas here. Uh, this is for auto parts. This will be for tools. But if we scroll over to jewelry, <clears throat> you can see I'm already starting to get some orders, uh, some missions. And so I've plugged this in. And to build a uh, jewelry factory, it was uh, $200,000 for the startup cost. <clears throat> and so, and it took about uh, 90 hours. Uh, I believe that breaks down to almost four days uh, build time. So just something to keep in mind when you're starting to build your factories. It is going to take some time to build those up. But once I got those built up, uh, then I'm able to start kind of watching for the jewelry orders. And in this case, uh, I had a jewelry order for 280. Uh, it cost me 43000 to build it or to create those. And uh, uh, jewelry revenue, it was $180 per pound. And so the revenue from that was 50000 50, And so I netted uh, $6,6700. Uh, $6, <clears throat> one we're going to finish today <clears throat> is uh, the 641, uh, 648 item mission. And so that was $101 to build, $115,000 in revenue. So almost $15,000 in revenue. And then I did 119, which uh, again netted uh, because it paid really well. Uh, I mean, I did 15,000 out of that. And so I got this uh, chart over here under startup costs. And as I get net revenue, I'm subtracting that out. So I'll know when uh, my factory is actually starting to make money. Uh, and uh, so it's at the break even point. Uh, <clears throat> that is basically the spreadsheet that I've got set up. Again, uh, it's what I've kind of come up with to help me <clears throat> manage my air hauler. And so uh, you, can do, you can do the same, whatever you want to put into a spreadsheet. I'm putting it all basically in one spreadsheet and then just creating tabs. I may break this out into separate states on it, uh, but for right now, <clears throat> it is small enough that I can keep it all on one spreadsheet and just continue to add the tabs. All right, so that was the spreadsheet. Hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any questions, just uh, uh, pop me a uh, comment and I'll try to answer it for you. All right. So let's uh, close the uh, minimize the spreadsheet here. And we are back over here in Air Hauler. Uh, so let's get back to the company finances. Let's see, I want to go into factories now. And I can't remember if I had talked about loading up <clears throat> the commodities and moving stock around. But uh, to create the factory, 
I had to go into factories. And uh, if you go here, if you want to open up a new factory, then you would click the tab. And so that's going to bring this up. And you can build a factory at any base. So I can build a factory at any one of these bases if I wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to, but I would choose the base and then I would choose the item that I want to build. And so if we go here and we say we want to do uh, uh, Haggis as an example, it's going to cost 100000 to build that and it's going to take one day to build the factory. So that's not too bad. So the higher the factory, the higher the tier level of the item, it's going to take longer and cost more. So let's cancel this. Now, I'm here at uh, San Diego, and if I wanted to open, uh, or I got the factory details, and I can, uh, let's see, uh, factory details right here. So I can open this up, and if I wanted to add like that tools, I can go here, I can scroll down to tools, and that's going to cost me 115000 It's going to take two days to, to do the build out. And so I can have up to three items I can produce at any one factory. So I'll probably do jewelry and tools for sure, and I may do the auto parts here, uh, but I'm not ready to open up the tools since we've already uh, opening up a base and opening up and paying on the loan. So let's cancel that. So now <clears throat> when it comes to stock and manufacturing, you need to have the commodity on hand to actually do the build. So let's go uh, over to the overview map and let's go to KSDM. That's brown, let's use selected. And so I need to buy some precious metals from the uh, airport. And so we will buy 100 items. All right. So you do that, you click on buy, and then uh, you click put in 100. That's going to cost me $7,800. And it's going to go to my base storage. I don't think, yeah, it, I can only put it into my base storage or into an aircraft. So let's go ahead and buy. There we go. Commodities purchased. Okay. Now, if we go over to our factories, uh, we go to Browns Point. So we need to <clears throat> move items. So we've got over here, if we go over here, we can see that we've got those 100 precious metals and we want to move that over to the factory. So we click move to, and then we click OK. It's been moved over. So now in our stock, factory stock, we see that our precious metals are right there. <clears throat> uh, so now if we want to manufacture 50 uh, jewelry uh, items, we can do that. And so let's go ahead and get that into the queue. We might as well. Uh, that way I have that stock on hand. And let's go ahead and click manufacture. Uh, we want to build 50. And that's going to take 100 precious metals, which we have in stock. And so we want to add that to the queue. And that'll make 50 pounds of jewelry. Yes. Okay. So it's going to show pending. It's going to show it not really. It is processing. Uh, it just nothing really. There's no graphs or anything that shows how much is being made. It's except it will end up. You'll see the precious metals slowly going down and your jewelry stock going uh, commodity going up. Now it makes <clears throat> ten uh, pounds of jewelry every six minutes. So that's a hundred pounds in an hour. So it'll take an hour to make these 100, uh, or to make these uh, 50 jewelry items. <clears throat> so uh, it's not too bad. And a lot of the missions that I've been seeing will give you three or four days to, to do the mission. So you should have plenty of time to be able to <coughs> make your, your product and then still get that over to the missions board. 
now, uh, so that's that's the factories, and that's how those work. So I have an accepted mission out here, and since this uh, had uh, since my uh, air hauler got shut off, uh, I didn't have time in the regular mission to go ahead and show this being delivered. But since I am following up on this and create, having to create a second uh, video out of this, uh, I can go ahead and show you what I'm talking about as far as supplying the goods. So if we refresh this, we have our pilot, Maya, who has flown to Phoenix, and the uh, airplane is there with the 648 items on there. So I can go into my missions, my accepted missions, highlight the mission that I want, and then I can click down here on the bottom, this supply goods. And so that's going to bring this up. So it's going to show you I've got the Sears sitting there with 648. And so we're going to click max. It's going to go 648. We're going to click supply goods. And it's going to say commodities supplied. Uh, it's going to tell you the mission's completed. The that the jewelry will pay 178 per pound up to a maximum of 648. So you click OK. And then it's telling you that your contact has enough stock of this commodity now. So I've been able to do it all in one shot on all of my missions, but I think you can do it as partial loads as well if that's what you wanted to do. So let's click OK, and that clears out the missions. All right, so that's factories and missions. And so I think that brings us to the flight. And at this point, uh, I will catch up with you over into the Microsoft Flight Simulator and in the cockpit when I'm ready to take off for Flagstaff. And then uh, so we'll fly up to Flagstaff and then uh, I will uh, finish out the video uh, there. Uh, uh, showing you what I did because I'd already actually created the uh, air base, so the base is already building. So at this point, uh, I'll catch you when uh, we are about ready to uh, land. And uh, once we get landed, I'll, I'll catch up with you uh, back in uh, air hauler. Okay, I am here in the cockpit. One thing I forgot to mention. Uh, and I went ahead and did that while I was uh, making the change over, was we also are going to take a load of commodities up to Flagstaff. Uh, we're going to take a load of livestock up. So we've got 500 pounds of livestock uh, loaded, and so we'll be able to deliver that to Flagstaff and make some money off of this flight as we're going up there as well. as. So we're not going to be flying just deadhead up to Flagstaff. I've got my elevation. We're going to have to go up to about 9,000 feet because Flagstaff is fairly high up there. So that's the kind of the one downfall. It is a higher elevation airport. But I'm all set up to go up to 9,000, and we can adjust that back and forth if need be. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I've already got the weights all set, and I think we are ready to take off. Uh, although I suppose I should bring my joystick up here and uh, get it ready to go. So let's uh, move that around. And let's uh, go ahead and take off. All right. Here we go. And release the brake. And once we get taken off here, we'll take off. Oh, and the other thing too is, I, if you've watched my last video, you notice, if you remember, I ran out of gas uh, as we were flying down. We almost made it to San Diego. Uh, and we had to land a little bit short. So let's uh, go ahead and take off. 
And let's uh, raise our landing gear. And let's go ahead and set our autopilot, our navigation. And let's click that. And it's going to adjust a little bit if we look at, yeah, it's swinging over because of the other center of the airport. Uh, it kind of sets up, so it's going to fly over there and then kind of straighten out. Back around. Let's raise our flap. And we should be set and ready to go as we fly out over Phoenix here and on our way to Flagstaff. Well, I you've seen me do all of this other stuff, get up to elevation and stuff. So at this point, I'm just going to fly along and let you guys enjoy the uh, uh, flight. And I'll make my adjustments as we go along. So I'll see you at uh, when we're about ready to land at the Flagstaff Airport.
Well, we are almost to the airport. I am going to take this off of autopilot. And let's start uh, kind of getting ready. You can kind of ver see it over there off to our left. And it is at 7,000 foot elevation. That's why I was fairly comfortable with the 9,000 foot uh, elevation or altitude that we flew at. So uh, we are going to be landing here in just a couple of minutes. So about another mile on this course, and then we'll start uh, making our turn into the airport. And since I've taken it off of autopilot, it's not going to make the turn for us. That's why I'm doing it. Usually I try to have that out a little bit farther, but again, there's uh, mountains and stuff. So I think we can start uh, making this turn now and we should see the airport come around. There it is. I probably could have started turning a little bit sooner. All right, let's get lined up on this. Well, as you can see, this was the airport that I had uh, bought on the Microsoft Spring Sale. So, uh, pretty nice looking airport. 500. Real long runway because it is at uh, higher elevations. Minimums. Oh. I suppose I should put landing gear down, eh? 100. Ah. 50, 40. 30. 20. 10. That was almost a bonehead move. Oof. Come on, come on. Oh, what a horrible ass landing. That was just terrible. Wow. All right. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, air hauler, I didn't mean to stop out here either. Well, that all went downhill fairly quickly. Well, we're down on the ground and, and we are fairly safe, or leastwise we'll be able to walk away from it. Now let's get over here to parking. And oh, what's with all of the traffic? All right, I just want to get over here. And we'll just park right right here. We're here at the airport. And this looks like a good spot to park right here. Okay. All right, we are landed. Set the brake. Let's uh, cut the engine. And we're gonna do one more thing real quick here that I normally don't do. Let's uh, go hop outside and let's see if we can uh, get a look at the airport here. Let's 
just so you kind of see what what this airport looks like. So it's got the runway, it's got everything in. Uh, there we go. Let's get straightened up here a little bit. Uh, it's got the uh, taxiways all the way out and into there, and there is the main terminal, I believe. And then the tower, you can see it down there. And there is uh, the uh, other taxiways and the runways. All right, well, let's uh, hop back inside. Uh, let's go back into the cockpit, and we can close this. Okay, so that's Flagstaff Airport, and we managed to get landed. And so I will see you back over in Air Hauler. Okay, we are back over here in Air Hauler, and so we have, well, again, I had already got the base under construction. <clears throat> we landed there and uh, got that started. So just to kind of reiterate what I did up there once we had gotten to Flagstaff, uh, we opened the base. Opening cost was $205,000. Uh, the build finish at this point will be in 63 hours, uh, so that uh, was going to be right at uh, three days and uh, uh, so that's in process uh, I think that means uh, here in another well another two or three days Flagstaff will be up and running <clears throat> uh, the it has commodities and that's what I'm looking for in my new bases as I am flying and traveling to those different bases and so now we have the uh, Flagstaff with commodities, and I'm going to be able to probably put in, I think, a cosmetics factory here at Flagstaff because it has uh, chemicals and it has perfume, and the cost is about 50% of the median. So it, uh, I should be able to get some pretty decent uh, uh, missions out of that, and so that uh, we'll keep an eye on on that. Uh, so I think, hopefully, this isn't too ragged of a uh, uh, video here, uh, having to re-record some of this. And uh, so, uh, yeah, hope you uh, enjoyed the video. So, all right, all you uh, flight sim pilots out there, keep flying away, keep those smooth landings coming. And uh, oh yeah, so let me let me let me start this all over again. All right, all you flight simmers out there, if you like this video please hit that thumbs up because it really helps the video out a lot. And please subscribe. That'll really help the channel. And ring that bell. It will let you know when I am uploading new videos, and I'm doing that on a regular basis. Okay, now all you flight simmers out there, keep those smooth landings coming. Not quite like I landed at Flagstaff today. That was a bit bumpy coming in. So uh, uh, keep them much smoother. Okay, we, uh, I think that will do it. And with that, Commander Kingfish is out of here, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.